from sea to shining sea, and everywhere in between. Wherever you are around the country, this is America's Outdoor Talk program, Outdoors This Week. Outdoors This Week. Get the kids, get the dog, get the cat, sit them all down next to the radio. We are going to be talking about the great outdoors today. And now, with America's latest news and talk on the great outdoors. This is a dangerous place, man. You've got thousand pound bears wanting something that you have. Here's your host, Alex Langer. Why, that would be me, ladies and gentlemen. You're, you're humble and sometimes sometimes bragging host, but I'm humble today. I'm humble because we have with us a man who has won the Bassmaster Classic, and, and I'm also humble because he's from South Philly originally. Of course, that's none other than Mike Iconelli. Mike Iconelli really rocked the fishing world when he won his first Bassmaster Classic. That was almost 10 years ago, but it, it, it still seems like yesterday because Mike was such a breath of fresh air. You know, before Mike, people that fished bass fishing and, and won the Classics were, were all from the South. Is that true? I think it is true. Mike broke the mold, and, you know, the old mold was a southern gentleman that you gravitate towards, Lynn. I do. He is a northern non-gentleman. I say that <laughs> with the utmost respect because, you know, he screams. He catches a fish, and he screams he does. out loud, and that was what was needed in the stodgy old back. Yeah, it's like a wake-up call. That's right. It was Exactly, Lynn. <laughs> He's an amazing guy, and... He was originally from Philly, and now he's from Jersey. You can say what you will about him, but what he does at fishing tournaments is he signs autographs for kids, and he does that long after everybody else is gone. You That's know, so great. I, I know because I've seen him. That is what he does. That's our only guest on this show. He's maybe my favorite, all-time favorite bass fisherman, but, you know, if I said that he was... That would obviate everybody else that we have on this show. <laughs> so I, I can't say that. No. But I can imply it. <laughs> all right. Uh, folks, so then we have all of our other southern gentlemen and our northern gentlemen. We, we, we got Ron Linder. We got Larry Whiteley. We got Sammy Lee. And good old what's-his-name, Wade Bourne. And, you know, good old what's-his-name is always there always. to close out the show. So, folks, don't miss Mike. We'll be right back. More of America's favorite outdoor talk program, Outdoors This Week, after these messages. Hi, folks. Ron Linder here for Linder's Angling Edge Television. We're still playing on the Pursuit Channel and uh, WFN. However, I've got something else to announce. It is uh, our trilogy book called A Hundred Years on the Water. That's 50 from me and 50 from Al. And uh, the trilogy is a three-part series. It's 1965, to, well, that 1964 to, to 1974. That's called, that per portion is called the early days. Then from 1975 to 1998, uh, that's called the in-fisherman years. And then from 1999 to the present is called the modern era. We are in the midst of writing the second portion, which is the in fisherman years, both Al and I, it it what it does is looks at 50 years of being active in the sports fishing world and, and how it has changed. Coincidentally, when we started, in book one is ready. Uh, you can find this on anglingedge.com. Anglingedge.com. Go put it in. You can find book one. It starts in 1964. It takes us to 74. And uh, it's our active uh, uh, participation in the sports fishing world. And when it starts, gasoline is 25 cents a gallon. Boats were 12 foot long, uh, usually, made of wood. They had oar locks. If you had a motor at all, it was a six horsepower that you yanked with a string. This is when the era starts. So we start from there and go to 74, which is some of the most dynamic years that we've ever seen. Now, the, the sport has constantly been in, in a revolution, but we call this the opening salvo of the modern angling revolution. Those years saw such changes when it started from what it was, and we experienced it day by day, to what it is uh, uh, by 74 would just amaze you. 
And this is all chronicled in a book called Catching Fish. It's available at Angling edge.com go there anglingedge.com on the web and you'll, you'll find it you'll see the thing for the book uh the second book called the the in fisherman years i'm in a process of working on that right now interestingly uh on my uh current facebook site by the way you can go to ron Linder facebook you'll see an ad for bill Plummer's frog now bill bill uh, Plummer was a good friend of alex langer's and uh, an associate from out east there, and uh, they did a lot of things together. But we were promoting Bill Plummer's Frog Back, and you'll see a piece of that on that. I posted it on my Facebook site. This is all history stuff with Al. Uh, but we, it, we take the entire era, and when it started, very few people had depth finders of any sort. No lakes were mapped. The, the Everything under the veil of water for most folks, was uh, it just blinded them. They had no idea what was below, below the veil of water. And how this changed and how it continues to change and how it continued to evolve. In these 50 years that Al and I are chronicling, you're going to see, we, we did it with a timeline. And uh, a lot like Forrest Gump. We happened to be there when it, when when these things happened. These big days, we were in the business at all these times. Either he or I were there, and in these half a century, fifty years for both of us, uh, we fished from the Arctic Circle to the uh, Caribbean. Actually, we got to South America as well, but the, in Mexico, but the, uh, all through Canada, and then from uh, the Atlantic to Pacific. There is one place that I have not fished so far is that's Alaska. Al has fished every state in the Union. So, uh, uh, and, and almost every province except one that I know of. And uh, two, no, excuse me, two. So we've covered this ground pretty thoroughly. And, and the experiences that we chronicle in the book, are these were every time we go to something, we make it, it, it was revolutionary or, 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 or Game changing. That's what we called it. Game changing. So, if you want to know more about the history of sports fishing and how it came to be, what it was, and a lot of this history is pertinent for today because what's happening today is dependent upon what happened back then. So, we're chronicling it all in a tri- trilogy of books, uh, and the first one of them is available. It's called Catching Fish, 1964 to 1974. The In Fisherman Years, which goes 75 to ni- uh, 19, 19, 1974. To 1998 is in the process. I'm writing it. Guys like Alex will find it fascinating. Listen, younger guys that are just out there, younger gals will be interested to see what happened, where it happened, and uh, time to take a look. So that's it for today. So see you later, folks. I'm Howie Mandel. Did you know attention deficit hyperactivity disorder in adults is a real and treatable medical disorder? The symptoms of ADHD make it difficult to pay attention, focus, be organized, complete tasks, and maintain relationships. Talk to your doctor and visit adultadhdisrael.com. I want to talk to you about a win-win-win situation called adoption. The adoptive parent wins, the birth mother wins, but most of all, the baby wins because that baby gets raised in a home with two parents. There aren't many situations in life that are win-win-win. Adoption is one of those few. Adoption. It's about love. A message from LDS Family Services. Explosive action coming up on Bass Pro Shops Outdoor World. Have you ever wanted to disappear into the woods? Have you ever wanted to tie your own flies, but never taken the time? Have you ever wanted to speak turkey? Then you belong at Bass Pro Shops. Every week, we offer free skills workshops to help you get started. See the store or go to BassPro.com for more information. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Some of the hottest fishing action takes place just below flood control dams. Why? Because in the course of discharging high water, these dams sluice large quantities of forage fish downstream. The fish that pass through a sluice are often drawn from a depth of 50 or more feet and discharged to the surface on the downstream side of a dam. The sluiced fish are helpless and drift along with the current. Lying below the dam are various game fish just waiting for an easy meal. To take advantage of this situation, thread a minnow onto a long shank hook Add the appropriate amount of weight and settle back for some explosive action. 
Now, for more fishing tips and other great stuff, go to BassPro.com and click on News and Tips. Now, get out there and enjoy our great outdoors and take someone with you and introduce them to the outdoor traditions you love so much. I'm Larry Whiteley, and this is Bass Pro Shops Outdoor World. Thanks, Larry. And uh, you always have some wonderful Southern advice for us. We have with us today a legend in his own time. And uh, what I like about my next guest is not only did he win the Bassmaster Classic in 2003, 2003 almost seems like yesterday, but he's also from South Philly. South Philly is not the epicenter of bass fishing. Uh, first of all, Mike, thanks for being in the show. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. You probably were were the only Bassmaster Classic winner to ever be in our studio personally. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's awesome. You're into Bass University now, right? That's right. Yep. You were here doing Bass University in Massachusetts, and uh, you were here with Pete Gluzek, who we refer to here as the dean. What's Bass University doing these days? Yeah, Bass University is great. You know, I mean, Bass University is really the other extension of the sport that I really love and, and that Pete loves and that a lot of the pros that fish full time, they really love it. And that's, you know, that's the educational side of it. You know, it's, uh, it's such a unique sport in that, you know, there's, it, it's always evolving and there's so many uh, tricks and trends and secrets out there. And, you know, I feel like maybe 20 years ago, a lot of those kind of were kept close to the belt. But, you know, in Bash University, we, we were about sharing that information and, and, and about teaching, you know. And uh, it, it's a program that I'm really proud of, and I know Pete is. And, um, you know, we get to, to do two-day instructional courses all over the country. We bring in, you know, six of the world's best bass anglers, and they, yeah. and they really are. Um, and we, we kind of put them in a room and then have a limited class size. You know, we, we really try to limit our class sizes to under 200 students. And we create an environment, almost like, almost like a college course, um, you know, where students can come in and, and really learn a lot and, and rub elbows with some of the heroes of the sport right. and, uh, and, and leave, you know, when, when 5 o'clock Sunday comes, they get to leave with a whole lot of information and uh, and hopefully become better anglers. Have there been any success that you can point to? I'm going to put you on the spot, Mike. Yep, absolutely, Alex. And uh, you know the neat thing about it is we've kind of about two years in. We said we said the same thing. We said you know we got to start tracking these success stories, you yep. know. And uh, so we actually have that highlighted uh, on our website. You know, if you go to thebashuniversity.com. We've got a section there that really highlights students that have went on and turned information into success. And, you know, it's, a, it's at various levels. And that's the great thing about our class. It's, it's not just for aspiring elite, you know, BASS elite pros. Yep. And there, there are a bunch of those. But it's every ladder rung from, from the top down. So, you know, go on there. We've got stories of guys going back and, you know, winning their club events. Uh, you know, winning a college tournament, you know, college student coming to our class and then winning a college event, you know, all the way down to just somebody that loves the fish and that came back and said, oh, my gosh, I learned something. I took it out on the water and I caught smallmouth where I've never caught them before based on the information from your class. So that, that's the neat thing about it. You know, you, you can really be at any level um, and take some of that information and, and become a better angler. Give us your favorite story. Who's your favorite testimonial? favorite testimonial of a student that's been there is probably um, we've got a, a young lady angler from Canada that's, I think, been to seven classes, um, and, she, and she really has a lot of stories, but the one in particular that stands out is that, you know, after an event, she was able to go back and fish against her all-male counterpart club and, uh, and use something that they learned in our class about fishing deep water. And she won her first club event ever. And that's, that's going back about two years. Wow. But that one was great because here's, a, here's a, a female angler who really took the information, went back, and then whooped up on the boys. And I, I love that story. <laughs> I love that myself. You know, we're going to take a quick break. Would you come back for another segment or two? Yes, sir. All right, great. We'll be right back with Mike Iaconelli himself. 
We'll be back in a moment with more Outdoors This Week with Alex Langer. Bubba had a dream, Bubba had a wish To find himself a woman that loved a fish One day at the tackle shop his dream came true And now for everyone he catches, she catches too Hey Bubba, she fishes better than you Tight Lines with Sammy Lee. If you never had an opportunity to meet and talk with the late Doug Hannon about fishing, folks, you missed a real treat. Hello, this is Sammy Lee. Today, I'll start a discussion with a man who people called the Bass Professor, my late friend Doug Hannon, after this message. Your best tool for catching big fish isn't even in your tackle box. It's FishMate Pro, the app that loads your smartphone up with everything you need to catch the big ones. You get the best feeding times in the moon phase, plus all your current weather conditions, including barometric pressure and color weather radar. And when you catch a trophy, take a picture on the phone and FishMate Pro interfaces with Facebook and Twitter. Plus, you get recipes, fishing news, and podcasts updated every weekday right in the palm of your hand. Bring more fun to your fishing with the FishMate Pro app. Find out all you need to know at FishMateApp.com. During his life, Doug Hannon was recognized as one of the leading authorities in America on bass movements and the methods of catching fish. So when I sat down with Doug a few years ago, and knowing that he'd gone to college at Tulane University in New Orleans, I asked him what made him go into fishing research for a living. I came to college in the South, and then when I got out of there, I I got involved in the fishing. My wife was a liked to bass fish, and... I hadn't done it since I was a kid because I just was in a city environment and couldn't do it. And uh, so I put it out of my mind and then she got me started as something to do to to, uh, sneak away from the house and that sort of thing. And we'd we'd, uh, make trips out of college. I graduated before she did, so we'd make, take our vacations and we'd come to Lake Jackson in Florida in the heyday, which was unbelievable place. Never be another place like it. I was, uh, you know, I got very interested in the big bass because my my contact was established with Lake Jackson, and uh, that was what the emphasis was. And when we got out of college, we came to Florida in 1971, and. Uh, we got a place as fate would have it on a lake. <laughs> I guess that I should have had it so tough. I'll continue reflecting on a conversation from a few years ago, so be sure to join us next time. I'm Sammy Lee, and until next time, Tight Lines. Tight Lines, brought to you by FishMate, the ultimate fishing app for your smartphone. By UFP, America's leading maker of brake systems for boat trailers. By SmartBase, color changes everything. And by Cheyenne Ridge Signature Lodge. Discover why our lodge earned two Beretta Tridents. Thanks, Sammy. And we used to have Doug Hannon on the show uh, many times, and, you know, he was a regular. Obviously, he, it's a great loss. We have with us Mike Iaconelli, and he not only did it win the Bassmaster Classic, but he's from South Philly, and he probably is the only one that my 87-year-old mother recognizes. Nobody else screams when he catches a fish. Mike, are you there? I'm here. Yes, sir. My mother loves you, so you you got to be okay. <laughs> I love it. Well, tell her I love her, too. I love it. <laughs> I will. You came into this culture, Southern gentleman, which I know very well, and, you know, you kind of crashed into it headlong. South Philly meets Alabama. <laughs> you got a lot of flack for it. Tell me about the flack for, from your perspective. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting. You know, I got involved in the sport, I think, uh, in a time period when... It was, it was kind of evolving. It was going through a change where very um, tr- traditional personalities were starting to give way to new guys from different parts of the country, uh, from different walks of life, you know, di- different backgrounds. And, um, and it, it all happened at a period when... The sport was getting more media attention than ever, right? Um, and and that was kind of part of it for me was was just getting into it 
during a really key time. You kind of broke the mold, if I can say that. You weren't the stereotype Southern gentleman, which a lot of the first generation bass folks were, but you were something from another planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was interesting because, you know, I think uh, I think deep down inside, you know, the, the, the passion and, and the excitement for the sport was the same as as a lot of the guys before me but 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 you know definitely i was kind of a different package and uh right. you, you know i i think you know looking back on it uh, you know a lot of guys want to look back and say you know I, this happened and you know this happened and this was intentional and you know a lot of it really wasn't a lot of it was just you know me being me and uh, and just kind of letting go of of trying to fit into a mold, which I did you in know, the very beginning. You know, you know, when I was first trying to really cut my teeth in the sport, I think I tried to fit in too much. Um, right. and, and then I got to a point where uh, there was uh, some other stuff going on in my life, and I really just said, you know what, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to be me. Right. Uh, you know, this is why I got involved in the sport, because I love it, I'm passionate about it. And, I, and I'm, I'm just going to be me. I'm just going to let 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 go, and and I think that was a very important thing for me to do. You know, not only from a standpoint of of fishing better, but right. from a standpoint of being uh, comfortable in my own skin. You uh, know, being from Boston. I completely get it because we all go through the phase where we try to put on a southern accent, or at least we did back then. The only bass fishermen we knew were from the south, but you're from South Philly, which is probably worse than being from Boston. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> you list your home lake as the Delaware River. Tell me about the Delaware River. Delaware is, boy, it's amazing. Um, you, you know, it, it's, it's amazing from the standpoint that it gets a lot of lack of attention uh you know we're, we're kind of sandwiched between a lot of other great fisheries you right. know we've got the potomac river and uh, the upper bay the susquehanna river you know to our south yep. uh we've got amazing places like the hudson river the finger lakes and lake champlain to our north so you know it's one of those places that gets for, forgot about a little bit yep. it, it kind of gets left out of the equation but it's an amazing diverse fishery that's had a great success story or a great comeback, like a lot of urban fisheries have. Right. You know, I can, I can remember the Delaware River from when I was a kid in the late seventies. I was, you know, you know, eight nine years old, and uh, remember the Delaware being a place where it was really hard to catch anything but carp and catfish, and it, it was, you know, still even at that point where they started to clean up was still kind of a dirty, polluted place. Right. And then I watched. As a as a young teen into my into my teens through high school, watched the place get better and better, as you know as as the environment got better and and now here, 20 years after that, it's really become an amazing success story from the standpoint that the fishery is healthy, the grass has come back, you know a, a lot. A lot of the species, like the striper and the smallmouth, have really taken hold. I'm from Boston, and they just cleaned up the Charles River Basin, like, in, in the last few years. But when we were fishing for bass in the Charles River, people were driving over on bridges saying, what are you fishing for? There's nothing in there. So, <laughs> so yep. I get it. You guys are going to the Alexandria Bay on the St. Lawrence Seaway, and it's never had the pollution problems the Delaware River has. There are lots of stories about waste being dumped into the St. Lawrence Lawrence. Like the Delaware River, it also has huge freighters on it every day. So, so. Oh, yeah. we got to take another quick break. W would you come back for another segment? Yes, sir. Absolutely. All right. Well, folks, we'll be right back with the Mike Iconelli. I'm hooked on hooking up and there ain't no cure. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Don't change that dial. Alex will be right back with more of Outdoors This Week after these messages. The bigger the better, break out the headline, I'm hooked on hooking up, and I... When the water temperature hits its peak in midsummer, bass get sluggish. This translates into less aggressive feeding activity and strikes. This is why in July, pro angler Mark Menendez recommends using baits that stay in the strike zone longer. Mark says sometimes you have to irritate the fish into biting. I'm Wade Bourne, and this is Wired to Fish Radio. Today, Mark talks about his favorite lures for coaxing lazy bass into biting. 
More Wired to Fish Radio coming up. Cabela's is the world's foremost outfitter for hunting, fishing, camping, and outdoor gear. They offer more gear than anybody, best selection, prices, and quality, all backed by Cabela's legendary guarantee. Shopping with Cabela's has never been easier or more convenient. You can outfit all your needs through Cabela's catalogs, website, and their many stores. Check them out at cabelas.com. Cabela's, the world's foremost outfitter. Imagine yourself thrown into the water. Maybe your boat hit a log. Maybe you just lost your balance on a slippery deck. What about your boat? Is it safely stopped or is it circling, motor running, bearing down on you with the propeller turning at high speed? Accidents like this occur every year. That's why the U.S. Coast Guard recommends that all boaters install an engine cutoff switch that stops the motor automatically if the operator falls out of the boat. I'm Wade Bourne reminding you to boat responsibly. For more information, visit uscgboating.org. This is Wired to Fish Radio. This time of year, most bass school up in deep water and hang around sunken bars and points and other structure. Mark Menendez says when the water is close to its peak temperature, the bass get sluggish. and You have to use slow-moving baits to goad them into striking. Slower choices, choices that you can keep in the strike zone around a piece of cover tend to be better choices than fast-moving baits like crankbaits. A big worm, a big football jig. One of the things I like to do is locate the cover associated with the drop-off or the structure, get that worm in there, and leave it in the cover. Pick the worm up and set it back down in the cover. Hang it over a a limb, the stump, pick it up a foot, set it back down a foot. Pick it up a foot, set it back down a foot. I'll yo-yo that bait in the cover for a considerable amount of time. And then all of a sudden, I pick it up a foot, and it only drops six inches when I go set it back down. Warm water fish are are not very aggressive as, as a general rule. And bites are very soft. Fluorocarbon lines are of a must. They transmit the strikes. They're very abrasion resistant, and you've got your baits in those covers. So you bass anglers, take Mark's advice to heart. When you're fishing deep, you should also be fishing slow. Mark says a crawling, bumping bait almost always gets more bites than a lure that goes skittering by. And that's today's Wired to Fish Radio. I'm Wade Bourne saying thanks for listening, and get outside. Thanks, Wade. I'll get outside when I'm good and ready don't push me, Wade. Uh, listen, we have Bassmaster Classic champion with us uh, today, Mike Iconelli. And, you know, I love Mike because he, he is so out of the box. Speaking of out of the box, uh, we just had Doug Hannon passed away earlier this year, and he was also kind of out of the box. Uh, M- Mike, did you ever meet Doug? I did. I did. He, yeah, he was uh, actually one of, one of my heroes of the sport. You know, one of the guys who kind of shaped a lot of what I do today. Right. You know, and, and the neat thing about that, it, it's, it's no different in any other sport out there. You know, football, baseball, golf. You know, you, you have, you know, young, young people growing up adoring a sport, you know, admiring a sport from afar. Yep. Um, and, and, and you latch on to personalities and athletes in that sport. You know, and, and he, he was one of the ones that, that I latched on to and, and learned a lot from and, and like I said, if you if you if you take him out of the equation for me personally, right? You know, I'm I'm not I'm not the angler I am today. You know, so pretty, pretty pretty awesome to think about it. Doug was the first one to really bring in catch and release. There was so many other things, but you know, if I had to name one where, where he really affected the sport, it's catch and release. You also had another hero who was also my hero, uh, Rick Clun. Yeah. Why was Rick your hero? Yeah, Rick, you know, Rick was my hero for a lot of reasons, but I think the biggest one is at that time in, in, in my life when I, was, when I was reading everything I could get my hands on, every magazine, uh, every TV show, you know, any, anything. I was all consuming for bass information. Yeah. He was really the first angler, in my opinion, to take it to the next level as far as the mental side of the sport. You right. know, he, he was the first one to look at seasonal pattern and and you know really put reasons to why he caught his fish it it wasn't accidental it wasn't luck it wasn't you know a a random act but it was pattern fishing and seasonal pattern and fish movement and predictability um and and that really intrigued me and and that that's why then and even now to this day you know he's he's still one of my big heroes 
What other personalities or heroes did you revere at that time and maybe still revere now? Yeah, a lot of them. Uh, you, you know, again, just, just from, the, from the time period, you know, the, the 80s, you yeah. know, the, the early 80s to late 80s. So, you know, Denny Brower and, gosh, uh, Gary Klein, uh, you know, even Kevin Van Dam to a certain extent and early in his career. Right. Um, you know, for sure, those guys, uh, Hank Parker, you know, more of the TV personalities. Yep. For sure. Um, the, a lot of them. And then a lot of a lot of less known personalities, too. A lot of West Coast icons. Don, the, Don Avino, Mike Folkstead, yep. some of those guys yep. were light lines, small baits. I mean, all those guys really have... Were, were heroes to me then, and, and even are still now, you know? Right. I got to meet a lot of those guys when I was doing the Flying Lure, and I gravitated toward the West Coast guys myself. They understood light line, and and yeah. no, nobody in the South really got light line like we did it from the Northeast, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, tell me about Takahiro Mori. Yeah, Takahiro, is, it's an amazing uh, success story. Uh, you know, he he's an all-around great guy uh that loves to fish that's passionate about it just like all of us yeah but the the story of takahiro i think is is the bigger picture and and you know it, it really does show that in this sport unlike a lot of them um you can really overcome a lot of traditional niches right and 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 become the best angler in the world right. uh and, and his story is is the perfect example of that you know a kid who came from japan that loved to fish you know, that was washing dishes in Japan yeah. that had a dream that loved the fish that came to the U.S. with nothing, that started with nothing and guided and worked hard every day to get to a point where he turned professional and then wins the classic. Right. You know, how, how much more of a success story can you get than that? that and and uh, that, that, know, all, the, that, all the barriers he overcame to, to become the best angler in the world, you that, know? That's maybe the most quintessential American success story right there. And, you know, yeah. you come to America and you, you, you tough it out and, and you're on top of the world. Mike, where can people find out more about you and about Bass University? Yeah, they can go to uh, uh, BassUniversity.com information on uh, on the Bash University and, and we're announcing our new schedule daily uh, in the next weeks you'll see the schedule announced and then on me of course go to mikeiconelli.com or follow me on my Facebook or Twitter accounts at Mike Iconelli and, uh, and and that's the best way to keep in touch okay Mike thanks a lot we'll be watching you <laughs> I All appreciate right. it thanks for the time all right thanks a lot Mike and there he goes he's a great champion we're done folks we'll see you next time on outdoors this week bye bye Outdoors This Week with Alex Langer.